Right, welcome back to this video lecture today on second degree price discrimination. We're going to be going over uh, the definitions, the explanation, as well as the graph for second degree price discrimination. So first things first, let's give a definition for second degree price dif discrimination. Definition, okay. So it is defined as second degree price discrimination is defined as when firms charges uh, different prices for the same good to different consumers based on quantity or volume or amount. Okay, it's so basically quantity, volume, or amount is basically the same thing. So it basically talks about uh, when the firm, okay, when any firm charges uh, different prices to different consumers based on their amount uh, of the good that they buy. So commonly seen examples for uh, for second degree price discrimination includes. Um, uh, common examples includes, for example, um, um, bulk discount. How, for, for example, if you go to uh, Costco or something, you will see that they will have, if you buy a certain amount, you get cheaper, or if you get a certain amount, it's going to uh, be cheaper. Or, for example, uh, buy three, get uh, one free uh, examples. For example, like makeup products often have uh, such, uh, such, um, such prerequisites. Okay, so these are common examples of uh, uh, second-degree price discrimination. Now, why is that? That is because uh, the, the consumers are being charged for the same exact product. Okay, the same exact product is being sold. Um, however, if we divide the price, the, 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 the price per unit is actually a variable. It's actually a variable um, under second-degree price discrimination. Um, now, why? Okay, why does second-degree de uh, second price discrimination occur. Now, why does it occur? Now, there's actually a few reasons. First of all, um, at, at bigger quantities, firms are f firms could decrease their um, the, the expenditure on advertisement. Firms actually are incentivized to sell at bigger quantities because it is appealing from a business appeal. Furthermore, um, let's think of people who will want to buy, for example, a toilet paper in bulk. Okay, Consumers, con consumers looking to buy in bulk usually has uh, higher elasticities okay that of which refers to how consumers with higher uh w w buying in bulk usually are more sensitive to prices okay for example uh um, restaurants or industrial or manufacturing okay for consumers when they want to buy paper okay if maybe little businesses or little consumers they buy 500 pieces of paper and that's enough however if you own a printing shop so so professional um professional uh, slash businesses versus domestic consumers. Okay, so these are different. Uh, th these different consumers have different variety in, in in the quantities or volumes that they have to charge at. Therefore, their uh, price discrimination would occur. Uh, second degree price discrimination. Uh, consumers looking to buy at uh, looking to buy in lower quantities. Uh, usually have uh, lower elasticities, which means they are less uh, sensitive to price changes um, affecting their demand. Okay, so these are some definitions and explanations of second-degree price discrimination. Now, what does this look like? Okay, what does this look like when we actually graph it in, in, in pen and paper? What does it look like in graphic form? Okay, so very standard, of course, we have our, our, our two-plane, our, 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 our two-plane, Right here is the price slash cost, a very, very standard stuff. And on the x-axis, we have, um, we once again have our quantity. Okay. And, and f uh, of course, this is going to be um, um, because, okay, what are some prerequisites for, for um, price discrimination? They have to be price setters, okay? Which means they are either a monopoly or an oligopoly. And for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to say that they are a monopoly, okay? So I'm just going to draw a monopolistic uh, diagram. So remember a monopolistic diagram? We have, um, we have our marginal, uh, we have our marginal cost. Um, we got, no, we got we we got our demand curve right here, downward sloping. Twice as steep is our is our marginal revenue. Marginal revenue curve is twice as steeping and can go negative. And our third uh, line that we have to draw is the is the marginal cost line that which looks something like this. I'm gonna move this a little bit to the left as well. 
uh, maybe decrease the width. Okay, so this is the marginal cost curve. Uh, it, it is, you know, the Nike sweeping sign. Okay, now let's say the firm is looking to produce at profit maximization. At point of profit maximization, the quantity is when MC equals MR. Now, where, where does that look like? That looks like it's right here, okay? So when MC equals MR, the firm is producing at profit maximization. Okay, I'm going to make this a, a dotted line. Right, so so the profit maximization quantity is here and connected to the dot and we could get the profit maximization uh, cost. There you go. Make it four, make it dotted. Now, how do we see how much profit this firm is making? To see how much profit this firm is making, we have to see the average total cost curve. The average total cost curve intersects, uh, that looks so ugly. The marginal, the average total cost curve intersects the marginal cost curve at its lowest point. So it looks at something like that. And this is the ATC, the ATC curve, our total cost curve. Okay, so um, so the intersection with the ATC curve is right here. Okay, there we go. Make it four, make it dotted. Okay, so um, this box, okay, this box right here shows okay the pro uh, the profit of, of the firm at profit maximization without price discrimination. Now, let's say the firm uh, has bulk discounts, okay? Uh, uh, if you buy, uh, let's say, 10 products, we will sell you at a discount price of 80%. So um, an additional line will be set right here, that of which is not producing a profit ma maximization. However, uh, it is also above, okay, above the consumer surplus. So this line exists right here. And of course, we connect it to the demand curve and we connect this back okay, to the price. That of which shows us how much money or how much income um, this firm is actually making in. That of which is shown through right here. Okay. So what does this graph tell us? Okay, what does this graph tell us? So first things first, this box right here, okay, this uh this this green box right here, um This box right here, the green box right here, shows the original profit quantity, okay? The original profit before um, price discrimination is enacted, okay? However, when pr price discrimination is enacted, this blue line occurs, okay? This blue graph occurs. What does this blue, uh, this blue square mean? This blue square basically means additional profit that the firm could receive when price discrimination is enacted. Now, remember what this triangle means. What does this triangle mean? Uh, what does this triangle mean? Um, insert, I want to insert a shape. What does this triangle refer to? Okay, what does this triangle mean? What is this gray triangle? This gray triangle refers to a consumer surplus. However, when price discrimination is enacted, consumer surplus is not uh, fully enacted. However, this blue uh, line is, this blue box is claimed. Okay, that of which shows that during price, price, price discrimination, firms could go beyond price discrimination. They could exceed price discrimination and actually um, have more income or have more profit as a result. So I hope this video is helpful in explaining what second degree price discrimination is. If it is helpful, please um, um, subscribe and like, you know the drill, and I hope to see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.